we're going to talk about meditation as a powerful tool for health, for education, and for post-traumatic stress. So, all right, what is meditation actually? Developments in modern science have shed interesting new light on the significance and meaning of this ancient practice. Modern physics reveals, and it's really very simple, that nature is structured in layers of creation, from fundamentally unified to superficially diversified, from unity to diversity. This starts at the surface level of day-to-day -day experience with the classical world, the sensory world of our common experience, to the deeper quantum mechanical world of atoms and molecules. And deeper still, the world of fundamental particles and forces. And finally, to the discovery of the unified field. Discovering the fundamental unity at the basis of the surface complexity and diversity of the universe. These theories, based on the superstring, fulfill Einstein's lifelong quest to discover the unified source of the diversified universe. And they reveal the fundamental unity of life and the fundamental unity of humanity. Now, from this modern perspective, meditation classically understood and properly practiced is a technique to take our outwardly directed attention powerfully within to experience deeper and deeper levels of thought, quieter and quieter levels of the thinking process transcending thought altogether, going beyond cognitive processing to experience pure consciousness, to experience the fundamental unity at the basis of mind and matter. So again, the meditation process classically draws the attention powerfully within to quieter levels of thought, to experience the source of thought, to experience the fundamental unity within. This fourth state of consciousness, traditionally called samadhi, or the meditative state, or transcending, is now understood scientifically to be a fourth major state of consciousness distinct from waking, dreaming, or deep sleep. And it has profound medical applications. Firstly, because it is a state of profound physiological rest, deeper than sleep, and due to that, because it is so effective at diffusing to dissolving deep-seated stress, more effective than relaxation or even what's conventionally called meditation, it's very effective at preventing and reversing stress-related illness, like high blood pressure, the number one risk factor for heart disease, and other risk factors for heart disease, like diabetes, and for clearing clogged arteries. And the bottom line really is for heart disease, marked reductions in the incidence of heart attack, stroke, or death. And this is a major study just published last week by the American Heart Association's journal Circulation, a nine-year longitudinal study funded by the National Institutes of Health and probably the most significant research ever done in the world of mind-body medicine, extremely compelling. And it's not just heart disease, but most disease is caused or complicated by stress. And it's not surprising that Blue Cross Blue Shield reports marked uh, reductions in every category of disease except childhood, which is arguably not a disease, childbirth. It's <laughs> the meditators were s mysteriously having as many babies as the non-meditating subjects. And also the deep rejuvenating rest of meditation is very helpful for aging. Aging is driven in good measure by fatigue and by stress. And just by exposing the nervous system to very deep rest regularly twice a day, the biological age, the age we appear, the age of our body and heart and organs is typically 12 to 15 years younger than those people who have more stress and who aren't meditating. The main focus today, however, is meditation's impact on the brain and brain development. As we saw, meditation draws the awareness systematically within, and each of these quieter levels of mind has a correspondingly completely different style of brain functioning. So outwardly directed, focused attention, cognitive processing has a very active state of neurophysiological firing. Quiet contemplation, so-called open monitoring, our mindfulness has a completely different style 
of brain functioning, going beyond all cognitive processing to experience the transcendent self has a completely different style of functioning of the brain characterized by profound what's called EEG coherence or the integrated functioning of the entire brain where the whole brain functions in concert. Now, for brain scientists, this is really cool stuff. It's also very important stuff because orderly brain functioning correlates with increasing IQ, intelligence, creativity, learning ability, academic performance, executive functioning, executive performance, moral reasoning, psychological stability. Everything good about the brain depends on its orderly functioning. And as an educator, what's really fascinating and important is orderly brain functioning can be systematically developed in any human being at any age, and with it, increasing intelligence and so forth. An amazing educational tool. But let's talk for just a moment about stress and its impact on learning. Stress shuts down the prefrontal cortex, or higher brain, and it shunts that blood to the primitive brain, or reactive brain, and puts the brain into what's called a fight-or-flight response. It is incompatible with learning. What's remarkable is, while this stress leads to stress-related learning disorders and stress-related behaviors, not just in school but throughout society, the marked reduction in those stress-related learning disorders, like ADHD, for example, and how rapidly they can be normalized, and how quickly brain functioning can be restored to a balanced state through meditation is really striking news. And really, as a result of that type of result, in the last couple of years, hundreds and hundreds of schools, public schools, in the United States and Latin America and throughout the world are incorporating transcending meditation into the school curriculum. In the last few years, it's over a million students are involved in these school programs. All right, but what about the most acute stress? We really are living in an epidemic of post-traumatic stress. We have half a million returning veterans with PTSD, and more soldiers die from stress and PTSD and related suicides than die in combat. And conventional treatments are not only very expensive, but they're really questionable in terms of their effectiveness. PTSD results from the chronic excitation of what's called the amygdala, or fear center, which tips the brain into a constant state of fight or flight, a constant state of heightened fear where everybody and everything is perceived as a threat. Meditation calms the amygdala more effectively than anything that has been tested so far and restores balanced brain functioning. And the results of this on PTSD are finally giving, leading to significant support from the DOD, from the Veterans Administration for programs within the military, the incorporation into military training to inoculate our troops against the ravages of war stress, and even more so today in foreign militaries all over the world. As if military duty was not challenging enough, uh, women in the military face unique challenges. Uh, military sexual trauma is the leading cause of PTSD among women. If you're a woman in the military, you've got a greater risk of being raped by a fellow service member than dying in combat. And traumatic stress, of course, is no longer confined to the military. It really is increasingly pervasive throughout society. Particularly, women are victimized and endure terrible hardships and injury and insult in war-torn areas throughout the world, as we know. Millions of women and girls are victimized by prostitution, involved in the multi-billion dollar sex trade. In our own homes, about every second or two, a woman is assaulted. And we all know the problems. Unfortunately, though, today, there are so many good organizations that are working to bring the healing effect of meditation to millions of women and children and others throughout the world. Very, very happy to work with all of these wonderful groups. And take a glimpse at some of these programs. A year ago this month, I was suicidal. I felt so low that I wanted to just not be here. I got pregnant at 13. My mom 
she got deported two years ago. Sometimes I cry because it's, it's just too much tension. The number of women and girls who are raped and tortured and killed in war-torn areas around the globe is literally beyond comprehension. My in-laws turned against me. They tortured me, almost killed me. The initial research of the effects of transcendental meditation in treating PTSD offers so much hope, better than many things being tried at far less a cost. Transcendental meditation saved my life. I had a lot of problems in my life, and Tim came into my life and gave me like this open door to something that I never knew it would be. Those days I used to cry too much, but now they, even the tears are holding. I'm great. Wow. So medically, scientifically, the most powerful antidote to stress and the key to optimal brain functioning is to transcend. Thank you.